First time I've been out of the room. It's nice out here. Really, first time I get on the elevator to yeah. come down. It's when nice. did you get here? Here? Sunday night. Sunday afternoon. Trying Stay to get outside. I, 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 I'm planning on getting going outside. Breathe. Ethan, what do you think? Yeah, a few more <laughs> <laughs> now, Ethan's a bundle of fun down here. I'm telling you. <laughs> We're going to hit the streets tonight. It used to be, you know, there's no trade show now. It used to be great. The trade yeah. show? They have one? There's a trade show here? Well, I mean, there's a minor league sign. I'm assuming I have a gun. I used to love the trade show. I used to love the, uh, you could actually walk through the lobby. You can walk through this lobby. It's jobs, it's kind of sad, there's so many jobs. Anyway. I saw Ethan have a Bud Light the other night. Let his hair down. Who? Ethan. Ethan had a Bud Light? One beer, <laughs> maybe half a beer. That's must-see entertainment there. <laughs> I don't know, it's around the count, but. Just all on the record. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's Ethan going to get in trouble with? <laughs> I don't know. What's up? Nothing that we can talk about. What do you think of the off season so far? Good. You know, a lot of work to do. Got good people in place to do it. Got a lot of things that we're uh, trying to do. Got reaction? a couple of, couple of coaching staff we're getting close to filling, working on that, and you know, I know they've had a lot of things like a uh, nutritionist. Uh, Carson's not going to be back with us. She's going to do something closer to home, so we got to fill that. It's a big position. Important things like that that may not seem as important as players, but. Things we still got to be on top of. What was your reaction when you heard uh, Jake? Took the oh, we were off? we were happy for him and his family. You know, they, uh, you know, it's a good place. I know Chris Young played for me. He's a good man, and I think the world of Bruce. So he's moving to a good situation, and you know, contrary to what a lot of people try to, you know. It wasn't something that he had preordained. You know, it's something that kind of played itself out, and you know, it's one of those offers he couldn't afford to pass up. And you know, we wish him well. It's uh, been a good place. The picture that you would hypothetically be bringing in to replace him. I know you can't talk openly, but generally speaking, as a manager, um, that's a different personality, and you've got another big personality in that room, Max. How, what is the challenge for you as a manager in making all that mesh? Well, you got, you, got, uh, you know, I really have to be careful about commenting on something that hadn't come to pass. You know, I'm not, I don't want to jinx us, but, uh, you know, that, that would be assuming that we didn't have some of that last year. You know, we had, you know, everybody when they get to this level has that. So, you know, those type of things are my job and the teammates job and the coaches job. And, you know, I've found it's not that hard to, make whatever adjustments need to be made when you got really good players. But, you know, we'll see how it works out when everything, the smoke clears and we see who we have going to St. Lucie and who we don't. And who we might acquire during the course of St. Lucie. You know, we have all these timelines like, oh, if you don't sign or do this by the time winter meetings are over, off season is over. I mean, we added Adam Montevino in spring training last year. You know, not many people pitch better than he did out of the bullpen. So, you know, just because things are delayed don't mean they're denied. You shouldn't wait till spring training this time to sign him. Pardon? You shouldn't wait till spring training this time to sign Adam? him. Adam? Yeah. Got to have cooperation on both sides. We like Adam, and I think he kind of likes us, and we'll see if it, uh, you know, fits in the scheme of trying to put a complete team together. Buck, we saw Francisco Alvarez come up at the end of the year a little bit. Uh, what role do you envision him playing with the club next year? Well, we'll see if uh, you know if there's an opportunity somewhere along the way for him to make a club. You know, whether it, you know with him, I think it's got it's got a chance to be uh, win and not if. Uh, but you know, there's still some things that he, we all, every young player, you'd like to 
they're not ever going to be a finished product when they get to the big leagues in today's game. But uh, you know, we'll see how he does in the spring. We'll see how uh, the all, rest of the offseason. But uh, we're glad he's on our side. We think he's got a chance to be a good player in the big leagues. What are some of the main things you'll be watching for the Reba Pond here this coming year? For him? Yeah. Uh, I think one thing that was obvious to me, he's going to, you know, the whole thing works well with others. He's very coachable, very uh, sponge-like. He wants to learn his, his ego. You know, it's, we had a lot of pitchers go down on rehabs and stuff, and they all came back and spoke highly of, of uh, Ali. So that part of it I like that he's, he's, uh, he's a pleaser. You know, he wants to bring what – and, he, you know, he doesn't have all the answers. He's a guy that's going to – I think he's going to uh, improve – as he goes forward, and, and got to keep in mind he's 21 years old, but uh, he's got a chance to be a really good player. Do you think the lineup needs more power? Not necessarily. You know, it depends on how you define power. Just purely home runs. You know, we score enough runs to to win, and uh, the better pitchers are, the sometimes the less home runs that are given up. So. Uh, no, I don't stay up at night about oh gosh, we got to have X number of power and let's let's add X number of strikeouts. And uh, you know, to beat the really good pitchers, you have to be able to do some things other than just hit uh, home runs. So, no, I, I don't I don't think that's a prerequisite. You know, if, if, I know if you're looking at something where we didn't rank highly compared to other clubs in baseball. At the end of the day, we did win 101 games, so you know, offensively, it must have been doing something right. You guys scored plenty of runs. I think you were seventh in the majors in slugging percentage, but only fifteenth in home runs. Mm -hmm. So to your point, you know, yeah, double power. I mean, it kind of depends on what you like philosophically, I guess. Offensively. I like when there's a W next to our name at the end of the game. I don't, you know, how we get there, we get there. You know, saying this is exactly who we are. You have to be have some versatility to you because on a given night, pitchers a lot better than some other guys, and you can't play that game. You don't go, hey, guys, we need to hit for power tonight. Hey, we need to do this tonight. It doesn't work that way. So, no, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, the approach that uh, we took last year and the way we went about it, and I uh, hope to improve on some of that. We'd all like to have the perfect player, high average, 30, 40 home runs and all that stuff, but very few of those exist. I think they're talking about one right now where he's going to end up, right? How would you feel about Marte playing center field if it comes to that? I think with Starling, he's willing to do whatever we want him to do. But I've, I found out with him getting to know him, you know, Joy's been great. Cora with having him is that uh, whatever you're going to do with him, let's be up front, tell him what's expected, and kind of leave it alone. Don't be moving him all over the place. We found that with the batting order. We found that with right field, left field, center field in the spring. He'll do whatever. You know, understand going to last year, he hadn't played right field. Right. So to make it work, it, you know, he played it for us. So that would have to be something that I'd have to – he'd be willing to do it, but you have to get ahead of it and be and be consistent in how you go about it. But from a wear and tear standpoint on his legs, does that concern you? You know, there's somewhat – some people will tell you that uh, right field might be as much, if not more, wear and tear. You know, center field, they say there's more territory, but there's also – a lot of decelerations in right field that you don't have in center field. The decelerations are, are, are really what I worry about more. You guys had a lot of free agents come off the roster. What is it like as a manager? You know these guys well, whether it's Jake, Nemo, Mechanata, you Vino. Know. Mm -hmm. um, what is it like as a manager, obviously wanting some of these guys back, but also you know, wanting for them what's good for them in their careers and their yeah. lives? You know, one, you, you become you know, aware of their lives and what, what's going on in reality over the course of the season. You try to stay in it, but, uh, you know, we'd like to have them all back, but it just doesn't work that way. And you want what's best for them, but you also selfishly want what's best for your club. I have a lot of confidence in, you know, watching how Billy and the front office worked last year before I got here. And so I have a lot of confidence in where we're going to end up this year. And if not always revealed to you like right now. We all want everything to be right now so we can write about it and project about it and say what's right and wrong and where the pitfalls are, but it just doesn't work that way. 
that uh, not everybody cooperates. You, know, you can have this great trade set up, and not at all. They should want this, and we'll get this. And you call them, they go, nope. Yeah, but I, you should, nope. <laughs> Sometimes if the cooperation is not there. You get a phone call from an agent and say, we're going to this place tomorrow. I just want to let you know. So, what was your reaction to the DA? A good one. No, Edwin's as good as it gets. I don't think I've ever had a closer from start to finish that good. And uh, love the fact how much he wanted to be here. I think he respected the way that that we respected how he rebounded. I, I like the fact that he's got it, had his nose bloodied and he knows what it's like to to come back from that. Um, I think he showed last year the ability to adjust on a given night. And he was very honest with us and he knew we listened to what he was saying. But uh, I don't think he's, he's one of those guys that will assume just because he had X amount of success in the last season that it's going to be there for next year. He knows he has to go out and earn it every night. You know? There's no secret. Everybody knows what he's bringing. You, if you do have to sort of reconfigure the outfield and you know, it's not an option, would you be comfortable with Neil, a leadoff hitter, or is, that, is there another option there that you'd like for that spot? Well, Brandon did such a good job leading off. That's, that's going to be a challenge. Um, we could look at it differently, but we have some options from within that I'd be comfortable with. Not sure yet until we see how the rest of it constructs itself, what direction we'll go. But uh, you, know, you mentioned a couple of good options there with Starling and, and uh, Jeff. But we, you know, we're, we're holding out hope that it somehow works out with Brandon. You and your group are talking to free agents. Talk specifically about playing in New York, playing in New York, handle. To a point, I don't think you become a prisoner to it. There's pressure to play in Kansas City. Okay, there's, there's we, we always seem to think we have a corner on it. You know, I've been in other places, and there's expectations, and, and a lot of them are self-driven. You know, the pressure, it's kind of, I think sometimes we go, oh, gosh, he could play there, but he couldn't play there. I, I don't know. If you're a good player, you can play anywhere. You know, and uh, I've seen some people that they'll go, oh, he'll struggle in New York. No, he didn't. Oh, he'll, he'll be fine with it. Uh, no, he wasn't. So what's driving that? You know, play better. So, I, you know, I hear a lot of that. And there's probably some truth to it, okay? I, it just depends on how you're wound. You know, I think it's a snowball place. you got to – it's one thing we liked about Adam is that Adam out of Angel might have had not so good night, but he never snowballed. And he didn't let it go – now, it might be from the fact that he's from New York. And he, you know, he loved it when he would – well, the few times he might struggle, he loved the fact we put him out there again the next night. Because, you know, you, you look for that in players, that, but you look at it everywhere. You don't want bad times to snowball. And uh, I think that's one thing you look for. You're going to sit around and feel sorry for yourself and wall around in pity. And, you know, they're, in New York, they're always waiting to embrace you. You just got to give them something to embrace you. They want you to be good. They want you to do well. They're not just waking up going, hey, please be bad for my team. You know, you control it. There's a Japanese free agent pitcher, Senga. There's Which actually three of them, you. but go ahead. So what do you think about him? Senga? Like him. You agent? <laughs> <laughs> How much you want? <laughs> Make a deal right here. You sign him? Would you sign him? Yes. How many years? No, I mean, no I'm not an agent. But no, but how many years do you think he'll get? Five? I mean, which one? I don't know. I know that's what everybody's trying to figure out, and it's, it's tough to project those guys, you know. But a good pitcher is a good pitcher. Um, you know, you're always thinking about, you know, the load of pitching every fifth day compared to, you know, the other one. But they said that about uh, some really good Japanese pitchers that came over here and did well. So he's a good one. Uh, he's, he's, I, we've talked with him, and uh, he's impressive. You can see why they think so highly of him. I enjoyed our little talk with him. You have a lot of experience, Koji and Wada. Uh, I talked to Koji about it. What does Koji <laughs> think? He's always going to. I had to actually talk to Koji's wife. <laughs> she and my wife stayed friends, and <laughs> she kind of interpreted for us. You say it's hard to project those guys. Why? 
just every fifth day. You know, it's, it's kind of like a Friday night pitcher in college baseball. You know, it's, they're pitching maybe once a week. All of a sudden, you're asked to post up every fifth day. It's a now they're throwing 140, 150 pitches in that once a week thing. So can you shorten them up at 90 to 100 and have them pitch every fifth day? Okay, what if you're wrong? So that's that's the thing you're always considering. What do you think of the? I understand there's some things you can't talk about, but the state of the rotation generally right now with several free agents, Degrom gone, etc. Getting there. You know, brought Carlos back. Potentially adding a guy from a, if we get through the physical. Um, I, I know all the names and people we're talking about, whether it be free agents or trades, and, and the parameters to, to work in. I'm confident we'll have some, some good pieces by the time we uh, break camp to play the Marlins. Just back what to do the you outfield think of- for, for a second. But some of the questions we're asking about Marte, where he might play. How much easier would make your life if you do get Brandon back? Of course, you know we'd like to have him. He's a good player. He's established himself, and you know he had a you know post up good physical year where he you know, you know for whatever reason he seemed to to, to get through a lot of things that uh, have been a challenge in the past. It didn't snowball into something where he had to sit out a lot of games. So that was good to see. So he answered some questions there, and he's capable of it. What was he 30? And you know, Brandon got better every year he played. You know, he improved. And uh, so somebody will get a, a good person and a good player. We hope it's us. But if not, you know, we have to be ready to pivot and, and move in another direction. What is the most important thing the Mets have to do this offseason? I'd, be, I'd probably look at it a little differently than some other people. That's why I'm asking. Uh, we've got a couple of coaches. We had a really good coaching staff last year. One of the better ones I've had. So we've got a couple of coaches to add. Uh, just from my standpoint, the rest of it kind of take care of itself. You know, I'm going to manage the players at GM that I have a lot of confidence in and owner put in front of me. And I'm looking forward to seeing who we end up with. Aside from the bullpen coach opening, Mm-hmm. What, do you have another opening? Or assistant opening? hitting coach. Right. Which is basically, the assistant hitting coach became the head. Yeah. And then we kind of <laughs> added, you know, Glenn's going to have this, you know, at some point we're going to end up with uh, Glenn spending a lot of time with Alvarez. So I'm not sure when that'll be, but we got to be ready for that. Is he in uniform still, Glenn? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah he better not be. <laughs> Glenn, I know Shabby's going to need a lot of help with the spring training scheduling and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Cold gloves don't help. It's, the it's, a, de- it's a developing skill set, skill set that he's going to get better at. <laughs> but uh, it'll be fun. We had a good one. Glad Jeremy got back on board. That was that was big. Uh, got Harrison signed. How long? Our, uh, Ten our, years. Uh, lifetime contract. <laughs> two years. That's what I got. I don't know what he signed for, but it was a good sign. We've already had a good offseason. We got a meeting tomorrow with the rules and all the new stuff coming in. I'm taking Harrison with me. That's going to be <laughs> that's going to be must yeah. see entertainment because he's going to any questions. Harrison's going to put his hand up. They already used a couple of his challenges last year in the meeting this morning as an example. Pretty cool. He's lost his humbleness, though. He, he's pretty good at. It. <laughs> You're pretty you good. You shouted him out too much. That's on you. Somebody, see, I, I, why won't we let somebody do an article on him? Now that he's got a contract, he, I wish somebody could sit with him during a game, look at the game the way he looks at. Like we pick up the phone, he's already looked at five replays. Let's make it happen. You know what yep. the key is? He knows how to work the machinery to get to angles before we even get to the phone. He's the best I've ever seen. And when he and. In. He uh, we changed in the middle of the year a couple of times. I just kind of like team doctors. I go, listen, we're going to ask your opinion. Give it. Now, if you're wrong ten times in a row, we'll get another doctor. But if you sit on the fence, we're definitely going to get another doctor. Yes or no? So you know, Harrison never gives us a. Ooh, that's a tough one, Buck. I love the fact that he'll go. 
he's probably out, but they will not overturn that. That's a tough one, is you know what they will overturn what they won't. He's good. What did you see in Jeremy Barnes? Um, that Competition. Makes... Somebody take him. We did. He's good. Yeah. Players liked him. He, he brought something that we were in need of, and we had an opportunity and a way to keep him, and we did. It's good. You know, we were lucky to have Glenn, Glenn could do anything. He's coached third, coached first, been a bench coach, been, you know, you name it, Glenn's been it. And uh, it helps, you know, Eric still will have some – Input, really, it's a way to have almost three hitting coaches. In today's game, everybody's got an assistant, right? You got an assistant? I don't think so. Yeah, you got somebody who stands in for you every once in a while, right? Yeah, I guess. But they can't carry your shoes. Wow. Well, who the hell can? Jolce's assistant. <laughs> Is it? A couple more. We got someone behind them. Good. <laughs> Who's coming up next? Who? You can say it out loud. Hmm? OJ, oh, good. What else we got? Let's see. What question would I ask if I were y'all? What question would you ask? Hmm. Could McNeil move to the outfield and play Guillermo May every day at second? Okay. I don't think we'll go there yet. Guillermo May's too valuable to move around. <laughs> what else would I ask? That's good. Who's your opening day starter? Right now, Max. How about tomorrow? Oh, what would you do? I'd give it to the guy who's been here. <laughs> Max didn't pitch opening day last year. No, Tyler McGill. Tyler McGill, yeah. Classic. He's having a good offseason. How so? He's healthy, throwing well. <laughs> Sometimes we forget about how big a part he played in everything for a couple of months. Get him back. Shutter? Shutter. That's it.